Obviously, you're my congressman, so I know pretty well what the district here looks like. But to lay it out for other people, uh, we, we are in about three weeks now of lockdown here and uh, of businesses, uh, for the most part, being shuttered, those that aren't essential businesses, at least. You may have heard the numbers that Kate Roger was, was just uh, referencing, but she's heard that uh, from the SBA that more than half of their businesses, small businesses, say that they could only hold on for about two months before they really go under. What, what are you hearing right now from constituencies, and what are you hearing about these, these loans and, and this relief and how quickly it can get to those businesses? Well, I mean, Becky, you know the area very well in northern New Jersey. We've been hit so hard, you know, 41,000 cases in the state and about 20 percent in, in my district in northern New Jersey. And we've, we've been shut down for weeks, and it's really hurt our small businesses. I mean, that it's working. We're flattening the curve, and, and, and I think that's what we really should focus on. But I, I hear every day and speak every day to small businesses and, and, frankly, businesses of all sizes that are really hurting. I think the PPP program, the loan forgiveness program, is going to help. It's giving people a lot of optimism that's going to give them enough to this. But, you know, there's a, there's a, a long wait. And so we're working, all working together to get those dollars out the door. What do you think when you are faced with the reality of the number of cases in your district and the real health concerns, the real worries that people have about that, and, and, and then the pressure from small businesses who are also feeling so much economic pain? How do you balance those two out? If it looks like social distancing is working right now, if it looks like staying at home is working, where are you when it comes to how soon you think we should open the economy back up? Well, I think first and foremost, we have to make sure that people are safe. And, and I, I think that has to be the paramount focus, as it, as it has been. And I think what we're doing is working. Um, you know, we still, our death toll is still way too high, and it's, and it's, it's just awful. And the number of people who are sick, as you heard from from Bob Garrett and our, our hospitals are full, and but but the good news it seems like there's some light on the horizon, you know. But I'm, I'm hearing anxiety from not just people who own businesses, but of course who work there, and and when they're going to be able to get back to work, and when we're going to be able to reopen America. And I think we need to be really smart about how we do it. I think we can do it in phases. I think we need to make sure that we get rapid testing up, massive rapid testing up. We need to make sure we have that protective equipment in place, that our hospitals are in a good place. Um, uh, and, and then we start deciding how we're going to do this in phases. I think we need a clear date to open. Um, so we start actually shooting for something. But, but again, it's really going to be a constant check on those numbers, on the spread, on making sure that we're containing it, on making sure that we actually are able to test, that we know of people who have, uh, have the antibodies, who they are, and so they can go back hopefully sooner. I think all those things need to be uh, factored in when we start looking at this and, and I think we really need to have a back-to-business plan, you know, as soon as we can. Congressman, the one thing that, that I hear that I uh, you echoing, that a lot of people have been echoing, is this need for rapid testing. We're nowhere near that right now. I know health care workers in this county who have been exposed to coronavirus and can't get tests. Uh, that seems so unacceptable to me. When do you think that problem can get resolved? Becky, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, I, I speak to our hospitals pretty much every day, and I was on the phone uh, yesterday with uh, frontline healthcare workers, as I am pretty much every single day. And, and as you know, I think uh, they and the first responders are our real heroes here. Um, and the fact that we can't, we're just barely getting them enough PPE, protective equipment, enough masks and goggles to do their job. And the fact that we can't get them tested um, and that they have to wait too, and that, uh, that we're not there yet is a real challenge, but, I, but here's the, the hope. I'm really, I'm really hearing that those numbers are improving, that we're really, in, that we're, you know, I speak to a lot of uh, our, our companies who are producing those tests. We are getting many more online. It's happening. It's just taking much longer than we want, right? I'm sure you've, I know you've covered Abbott and, and Beck and Dickinson, which is right in my district here. They're, they've got more tests that have come mm -hmm. online. So it's happening, just not nearly fast enough. And then we've got areas of the state in Sussex and Warren County, my state, that need more testing and, and have no testing or very, very little testing. Um, so th there's still a lot of work to do. And that, to me, is the big concern, getting the protective gear and barely getting by there and our ventilators. But the fact that we can't get these tests out the door, let, al let alone the test for uh, serological testing to see those who have the antibodies, uh, you know, that is a very big challenge.